What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything you need to know about and what's happening here in our country on a daily basis. We got some big news for you guys here in this video, which is going to affect a lot of people. And we've been seeing this here from 2022 and now into 2023. Also, I want to talk about some pretty big news that uh, I've seen here that could affect six major cities, millions of people here. And are you in one of these major cities? We'll go over that here in this video as well. Here we go. Also, thanks for liking this video so much. Here we go. Okay, Americans spent an extra $371 in food, housing, and utilities just since last December. Wow, where is the money coming from? Yeah, $371 in December alone from extra food costs, housing, and utilities. And this is a major concern that I've seen from so many different people here. Let me know down below in the comment section, how much per month on average do you think all these extra expenses are costing you? We know that the cost of food is sky high. We know the cost of utilities is up here as well, electricity as well. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but about 40% of electricity is because of natural gas. Yeah, and the cost of natural gas uh, is high because of, well, I hate to say it, but uh, the war in Russia and Ukraine. So we've seen the cost of natural gas spike up. Then it's actually come down here as well. And uh, But we've seen the cost of natural gas, oil, and diesel. All, a lot of that is because of the war. And I'll give you some information here on what's going on with that here because um, – it looks like it might be going on for a long time, a long time. It's not good news here. Um, Europe has recently said that they're um, Putin and Europe all has kind of a standoff here. And basically, everything has been cut off to Europe. So you know, Europe says they're not going to buy any oil from Russia and from Putin unless it's below their price cap, which is $60 a barrel. And then Putin said, well, we're not going to sell it to you anyways. So it's kind of an issue here. And what that did is cause a, um, a supply crunch in the market. And that raised the price of everything once again. So this is why a lot of people are like, well, how can this affect us here in the United States, Jimmy? That's, you know, Russia. That's Ukraine. That's over there, right? But, you know, oil and, and this stuff is, is traded on a worldwide basis. And when an entire, basically half of the continent over there is starving from oil, you know, depletion, and they can't get it, the United States is actually selling a lot of oil from here to over there. And remember that the main thing you got to know is that oil is sold on a worldwide basis. There's the oil price. I'll show you here. Yeah, so oil prices here, W2I crude and Brent crude, which are the two main ones, you know, they're down 1% here in the last, you know, 11 minutes here. It fluctuates wildly, actually. Um, is uh, This is a worldwide price, you know. So basically, this is kind of the same price here that you would pay in the United States as you would pay uh, in Europe, okay? Because basically, a, a barrel of oil is pretty much the same in most countries. But what a lot of people don't know here is that the price of gas, which has been kind of stable here in the U.S., it's been going up here recently. It's actually up about 10 cents here in the last week, which is not a good sign. Um, we've actually been up 20 cents in the last month, but we were down. So you could see a year ago, we were at 331, and now we're at 335. So basically in the last year, pretty much even but it's not a good sign to see it going back up here because we're up about 20 cents here in the last month. So we're seeing gas start to go back up, which is not a good sign at all. But even so, 335 a gallon, you look at what the prices are in Europe. You just look here. Um, this is a global petrol prices um, website here, and this is for the week ending January 16th here. 
Um, in U.S. dollars here, Germany, which is the largest economy in Europe, they're paying in U.S. dollars and U.S. gallons. They're paying seven dollars and thirteen cents a gallon in U.S. dollars and U.S. gallons for a gallon of gas in Germany. Remember, we're paying three thirty-five. In Germany, they're paying seven dollars and thirteen cents. This is the largest country economy basically in Europe more than double so again you know people in the US here want to blame whoever they want to blame right it's more than double there in Germany we'll we'll pick Italy here another pretty large country uh, country right seven dollars and forty cents wow okay let's pick another country here we'll pick Spain six dollars and sixty two cents. You can just go right down the line and pick pretty much any country in the world. Our gas is actually very cheap compared to most other countries. Yikes. But with America spending, what, what was it here? An extra $371 a month, basically, in food, housing, and utilities. The problem here is even though things are more expensive in a lot of other countries is that most Americans don't have an extra $371 per month, even per two months, for this stuff. Now, we know that the Social Security has got an 8.7% raise, which the average Social Security payment is around $1,500 some dollars and you multiply that by uh, 0.087, that equates to about an extra $130 a month. That's not 371. And what about the 50% of people that get less than that per month? That's even less. Yeah. Now, in addition to all this, you can see the headlines here. Russia is planning a major offensive here. That's a major problem here as well. After facing a string of setbacks nearly a year into its war in, on Ukraine, Russia is planning another major offensive to make up for its losses on the ground and justify its heavy human cost at home. Intelligence analyze, uh, analysts, researchers, Largely agree there is an offensive brewing in Moscow likely to come sometime in the winter winter or early spring. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky says we have no doubt that the current masters of Russia will throw everything they have left and everyone they can muster to try to turn the tide of the war and at least postpone their defeat. Last month, Ukrainian general, um, the commander of Ukrainian armed forces, warned Russia is amassing some 200,000 troops, newly trained troops, for another go at Kiev in an attempt to take the capital. Well, what does this mean? Even for us here in the U.S., this is a problem because, one, this means the war is probably going to go on for a long, long time. This means it's going to prop up things like food costs, gas costs, diesel costs, natural gas costs, pretty much everything. And not just for us, Ukraine, Russia, but the whole world. Because look at what has happened to the cost of a lot of things. And remember, we looked at the price of gas in Europe. It's six, seven dollars a gallon in U.S. dollars and U.S. gallons. Remember, they have different currencies and they have liters mostly over there. But if you equate it to what we're paying or in U.S. dollars, uh, it's unbearable over there. You know, and that's why mostly over there they drive like you know cars the size of a shoebox. Because can you imagine paying seven dollars a gallon all the time? Um, yeah. Well, you're thinking maybe if you're in California, you're like, yeah, Jimmy, we did last summer. It was. It was unbelievable, right? Yeah, well, the problem here is that if this war continues to go on for two, for all of 2023, uh, yeah, we could be dealing with, again, higher than normal 
prices on things like gas and remember food as well because everything has to be shipped to grocery stores via a diesel truck as well and everything you buy at a grocery store because how does it get there it gets there via a diesel truck which costs diesel which basically means surcharges for transportation and everything you buy at the store and then there's a lot of grains and a lot of food that comes from the bread basket of the world, which is Russia and Ukraine. Russia is basically not selling anything to the United States, which is causing a shortage, which is why there's a lot of markup on a lot of food that you know would otherwise not be marked up as much. Ukraine can't get a lot of their stuff out at, at all. So that's being basically causing a shortage, which is making food items be marked up higher than they should be. And then there's always the risk of World War III or a nuclear strike. Check this out. Yeah, I've seen this uh, in the news here. This is actually from Business Insider. A nuclear attack would most likely target one of these six U.S. cities. But an expert says none of them are prepared. What six U.S. cities do you think they are? Comment down below if you want to take a guess at them before I reveal them to you. Uh, and remember that Russia actually said that they have, uh, and I believe North Korea did too, that they actually have missiles that can go thousands of miles. So hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully the U.S. could shoot down something like this if it were to happen. The question is, are we prepared 24 hours a day with missile defense systems up and ready and monitoring in the darkness of night all the time if something like that were to come unannounced? Are we ready? Hopefully. Hopefully. We've never actually had that happen. Well, you got to think when Pearl Harbor happened, we surely weren't prepared for that. So let me know your thoughts here. But here's the six cities. The chance that a nuclear bomb would strike a U.S. city is slim, but nuclear experts say it's not out of the question. A nuclear attack is a large metropolitan area in one of the 15 disaster scenarios for which the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency, known as FEMA, has an emergency strategy. So the government actually has strategies for this. The agency's plan involves deploying first responders providing immediate shelter for evacuees and decontaminating victims who have been exposed to radiation. For everyday citizens, FEMA has some simple advice. Get inside, stay inside, and stay tuned. But according to Erwin Redlener, a public health expert at Columbia Universities, who specializes in disaster preparedness, these federal guidelines aren't enough to prepare a city for a nuclear attack. It says, quote, there isn't a single jurisdiction in America that has anything approaching an adequate plan to deal with a nuclear detonation, he says. That includes the six urban areas that Redliner thinks are the most likely targets of a nuclear attack, which are, according to him, New York, Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Washington, D.C. What are your thoughts on this? Would you agree? These cities are not only some of the largest and densest in the country, but home to critical infrastructure as well, like energy plants, finance hubs, hubs government facilities, like Washington, D.C., and wireless transmiss transmission systems that are vital to U.S. security. Each city has an emergency management website that informs citizens about what to do in a crisis. But most of those cities, except for L.A. and New York, don't directly mention a nuclear attack. That makes it difficult for residents to learn about how to protect themselves if a bomb were to hit one of those cities. Now, there was a few years ago... You can see here a false missile alert that was sent out to Hawaii and Hawaiians. You can see here uh, on a text, a ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. 
Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. This was a text that was sent out to Hawaii. And then a few moments later, messages were sent out that there's no missile threat to Hawaii. This was almost five years ago to the day. This is about five years ago and uh, a f- a five days and five years ago and a few days. Yeah, so uh, the button pusher who did it by accident was fired. Yeah. And you can see here, apparently Hawaii was already on the edge because of North Korea's missile and nuclear program as a growing threat to America. And you can see here the proximity to North Korea, Hawaii, and China. And don't forget that Russia is up here as well. So let me know your thoughts here. Is this something to be concerned about? Is something like Pearl Harbor, could that happen again in our lifetimes? Or is the U.S. fully prepared 24 hours a day, 365? Do you think something like what is happening in Ukraine, could something like that ever happen against America? And, you know, think about 9-11 here. Uh, Let me know your thoughts here in the comments, and I'll keep you up to date here. Make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so. Uh, Click the bell icon after you subscribe so you get notifications. And um, new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And thanks so much for liking and sharing these videos. Here's some videos you can watch next. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And here is a video about Social Security coming to an end as we possibly know it about what Congress is trying to do. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.